Good afternoon, Cougar Nation. Welcome to a new edition of the Cougar Tracks podcast. I'm your BYU insider, Mitch Harper. Happy as always to have you on board the podcast wherever you may be tuning in. It's Friday, August 12th. Here's the roadmap for today's show. BYU football is preparing for its first scrimmage of fall camp and a one-on-one interview with BYU linebacker Ben Bywater here on the program. Also, I'll give you some of the players that I think could surprise this season in 2022. The Cougar Tracks podcast is streaming live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the KSL Sports YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter pages. It's also available in podcast form on all major podcasting platforms. So coming up tomorrow on Saturday, BYU football will have its first scrimmage of fall camp. Just a quick programming note. Myself and Matt Biamonte will be live on Cougar Sports Saturday on KSL News Radio with live reaction from the scrimmage. We'll have a player or a coach on the program to discuss. So tune in to Cougar Sports Saturday at noon on KSL News Radio on Saturday, and we'll have live reaction from the scrimmage coming up tomorrow. But uh, it's always an important day in the fall camp calendar when scrimmage days roll along. And for BYU, I think that there's not many questions as far as you know, key personnel needs to emerge, things like that. Honestly, to me, it's one of those deals where you just want to bubble wrap everyone and make sure that everyone stays healthy. This was Kalani Sataki on his expectations for Saturday's first scrimmage of fall camp. Fundamental football. I need to see how well we can. We haven't seen our guys tackle yet, so I want to see how well our guys tackle. There's guys that have tackled before that just haven't done it in a while, so get in there and get a, you know, just get the, kind of shake off the, the, the rust there and, but the rest of the guys, I want to see if they can do that. Fundamentals for me is, can we block well? Can we tackle well? Can we take care of the football on offense and special teams? Can we take the ball away on defense and special teams? So that's, that's what it comes down to. And yeah, that was Kalani Sataki on the expectations for the scrimmage coming up on Saturday. I, I think that, again, the fall camp thus far has been pretty nondescript. It's been... Uh, low on news value. And I think that's probably honestly a good thing for this BYU team that has so much experience returning in 2022. You don't need it to be drama filled. You don't need it to be news filled. It's one of those camps where just get to the first game against South Florida. As I talked about on Wednesday, I think you're going to see some movement on South Florida's quarterback battle coming up this weekend. They have their first scrimmage on Saturday as well. Gary Bohannon, Timmy McLean, their quarterback situation. Jeff Scott said that after that first scrimmage, he wants to name a starter for the Bulls. So we'll get some potential intel on who QB1 will be for the Bulls when BYU lines up against them. I must say, USF too, they rolled out a new uniform look, kind of a throwback to their traditional identity that they had in like the 2007 range looks pretty good i think usf's going to be uh, a much improved football team this year i really do curious to see what uniforms byu trots out in that week one down in tampa coming up on on saturday september 3rd kickoff at 2 p.m we'll have extended pregame from tampa i'll be on the airwaves at 10 a.m on ksl news radio also we'll do some tv work as well it's gonna be a busy trip for me on week one. I want to play now my conversation with BYU linebacker Ben Bywater. Well, actually, first, the position battles going into the scrimmage. Again, there's not many. BYU's got an experienced team. Uh, very experienced compared to years gone by. In fact, this is the most experienced team Kalani's had since he took over the program in 2016. I asked him what position battles actually remain Heading into the scrimmage, and this is what he had to say. I think we still figure out some things on the O-line because there's so many good players there. Uh, decide what we want to do with our, our, our personnel packages on defense because it's another, another thing to get the best 11 out there. But now looking at the matchups and the different personnel sets, it's good that we have – we feel like we have more than just 11 starters on offense, defense. So uh, now it's just a matter of putting it together and putting a plan to get us, to get us the bit of some position to have the most success this, this season. 
I would say BYU right now on defense probably has about 17, 18 guys that they feel confident are, are starter caliber guys at maybe a P5 level on the defense. I think the offense probably goes about 21 guys, 22. Uh, the offense is, is loaded. There's a lot of quality players there. Again, the key, though, for Saturday scrimmage, keep everyone healthy. I don't even think you honestly need to play Jaron Hall in that scrimmage. It's going to be a close scrimmage. Uh, legacy Cougar Club holders will be allowed to go. I believe they were able to purchase tickets uh, recently. Well, that's the, one of the higher tiers in the Cougar Club. And then also family and spouses of the players, they will be allowed to attend the scrimmage. So and if you want to slide in my DMs, recap the scrimmage, feel free. Or uh, email me, mharper at cancel.com. That would be greatly appreciated there. I teased it earlier, my conversation with BYU linebacker Ben Bywater. He's one of those guys that clearly a starting caliber player on this BYU football defense. He led the team in tackles last year. He was the only guy on the defense with over 100 tackles a season ago. Ben Bod Bywater is a fascinating story because he's in his fourth year in the program, yet he's only a sophomore. We could see a lot of this guy going forward into the Big 12 Conference era. So now here's my conversation with BYU sophomore linebacker Ben Bywater here on the Cougar Tracks podcast. Welcome back into KSL News Radio. Mitch Harper here at BYU Football Fall Camp. Joined now by BYU linebacker Ben Bywater. And I got to say, Ben's a guy that I remember when he was coming out of Olympus High School, played rugby, played football, just had the the, 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 the look of a next big BYU linebacker and uh, all these preseason watch lists. It's sure looking that way, Ben. Dude, Mitch, you're the boy, man. I appreciate that. Seriously, you've always you've always gassed me up, and I seriously, I appreciate it. So, no, man, it's it's been great. Like the preseason awards is a blessing. Like I worked hard, and so like for that to, for that to come about is just you know it's just a cherry on top. But you know, you, there's those preseason awards don't matter much. It's all about getting wins. So, how is uh, the uh, what's maybe the the morale, the attitude of this defense heading into the 2022 season? The morale is be physical, right? We just want to be big, strong, fast, and, and a lot of depth, right? So, you know, you, we know what happened last year. A lot of guys went down, unfortunately. So if we can just take care of our bodies, get healthy, and then win games. That's exactly what we're trying to do. Was that loss last year to UAB was that kind of a sour pill that's resonated with you guys at all? Oh, devastating. So it's been a – it's definitely been a sour taste in our mouth this whole offseason. But, uh, I mean, for us, it's it's there's only so much. You go back, watch the film, analyze what you did wrong. Okay, so now how are we going to fix that? So for us, it's all hands on deck for USF, um, but it, it'll be good. So I'm excited for this year. I mean, our coaches are getting us right, so um, there's, there's no complaints on my end. What uh, What's going to change maybe for you personally in your game? Because now you're a known commodity. You know, We know that you're going to be a guy that contributes a lot to this defense. How does that change for you and make sure that you continue to evolve? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's for me, it's a the fundamentals. Like, can I, am I getting off blocks clean? Right. Am I reading exactly what the offense is trying to do down and distance? It's a, I mean, football is just that thing where it's like you can never be like too good at it. Like you can always improve. So for me, it's just how can I dial in the little things, stack days on top of each other? And uh, just my coaches are leading me in the right way and, and the whole linebacking crew in general. So it's uh, it's going to be a fun year. What has you the most excited about this year? Uh, for sure, Oregon game, Baylor game, and the Notre Dame game. So, I mean, the, all the games, you can't take any game for granted. So you got to treat all opponents the same, respect them all. But I think everyone on everyone in the program and everyone that's a fan is thinking the same thing. So This is, a, I believe, your, your fourth year with, yes, with the program. Uh, how are you approaching this year? I mean, are you – looking as your last how, how are you because you're, you're still a sophomore technically yes sir it's kind of it's crazy four years deep i'm in this thing so yeah like I, isaac rex is my age like we were roommates freshman year and so uh for me i'm not thinking too much about that to be honest it's like can i just go day to day and get better and so i know all of that's going to take care of itself you know when when the time comes but for me it's like hey you know if i gotta if i gotta do um just what they asked me to do i'll, I'll do it so I, I wish I had an answer for you. I'm not. I don't know exactly. You know if they, uh, but we'll, we'll figure it out. So a lot of talent in this linebacker room. Just before we let you go here, yes, um, you, uh, Peyton Keenan, Max Tooley, Pepe. Yep. Uh, we know about you guys. What about what's some of the next wave linebackers that uh, Cougar fans should know of ahead of the curve? Yeah, I've, I've been talking about it for a long time. Kavika Gagne. I think he's going to be a stud. I mean, he's been out there making plays and he works hard. You know, that's the I, that's 
all you can ask him for. So he works hard. I respect his work ethic. He goes and makes plays. He's smart. He gets off blocks really well. And so there's things about his game that I want to, you know, translate and, and add to mine. So I'm looking forward to him. Like, I guarantee you within the first three games, you're going to know who that is. So Kavika Ganya heard it here first. All right. Well, thanks, Ben. Stay healthy and uh, good luck this season, man. Mitch, appreciate you, man. Thank you. There you go. That's BYU linebacker Ben Bywater. My conversation with Ben here on the Cougar Tracks podcast. I could have gone a lot, a lot longer with Ben. Uh, it was tight on time, though, so made it quick, quicker than usual. You know me. I usually like to go at least seven to ten minutes with these guys, but we were kind of up against it with time. But I appreciate any sort of opportunity to chat with these players. And Ben's a... Uh, one of the best interviews, I think, in this BYU football team, you know, because every year in the in the media, there's always some of these guys that we just really enjoy hearing their commentary. Back in the day, it used to be Brady Papinga. He was a great soundbite for, you know, he would say when BYU had a losing record, he was basically like, you know, we're closer to nine and two than five and six, something along those lines. Curtis Brown was always good. Austin Colley. John Beck, Max Hall. You know, those days, it seems like it's more sterile now as far as the, the players will give the same lines that maybe they're coached up on. I get it. It's fine. You don't want to have any bulletin board material, even though we're talking about football. Who cares if someone gives bulletin board material? Is that going to suddenly change the fortunes if, say, BYU lined up against Alabama? And Bama gave BYU some bulletin board material. Is that going to suddenly change BYU's fortunes to take down the tide because they got bulletin board material? I've never understood that fear. I just don't. But I like guys that are willing to give honest answers. Ben Bywater is pretty good at that. And Bywater, I think, is one of the better linebackers on this BYU team. And it's a lot of fun to uh, to catch up with him. Uh, some commentary you can I can see the quotes or questions comments coming in Facebook YouTube Twitter uh, yay for sound today yeah apologies for that on the YouTube page on Wednesday my Puka Nakua interview that is up on the podcast feed talking about guys with good quotes Puka is an awesome interview uh, Nancy writes hey Mr. BYU well thank you I appreciate that Brian Mace the legendary Bean Mace. He writes, I love Mitch Harper. Love you too. Go Cougies. 22 days, and then we will see the Cougies in action against USF. And you heard it there from Ben Bywater. He said the guy that's going to be the surprise at linebacker is Kavika Gagne. And it got me thinking, who are going to be the players in 2022 that could surprise this season? So here's my five or six guys. I'll start things off with Chris Brooks, and it's not a surprise that he's going to be good. I mean, like, you watch one clip of him and you go, holy cow, that's 6'2", 235. BYU doesn't get running backs like that trucking at opponents very often. I think it just will be surprising to maybe the nation that, wow, BYU lost Tyler Algier, who's going to be one of the best running backs, rookie running backs in the NFL this year. They lose him, yet the machine keeps humming. What is BYU doing? Uh, I think Chris Brooks is going to be a big surprise to folks in college football. I think he's going to be outstanding. I think he's going to be a 1,000-yard rusher. Braden Cosper, another one. He is the one that doesn't get any sort of smoke. You don't hear any, no one's gassing up Braden Cosper. New uniform number. He's no longer number 85. He's now number 20 because he believes the number 85 was cursed due to all of his injuries. Knock on wood for Braden. Hopefully everything stays healthy for him. But I think that if you're talking about maybe wide receiver three and you base it on maybe trust factor, I think Fessy Satake trusts Braden Cosper the third most behind Puka and Gunner. I think there's a lot of trust factor there with Braden. It's just there's no body of work really on the field, the film to back up that trust from what they've seen of him in practices. but. The previous two fall camps coming up to this year, he was one of the, the underrated stars of fall camp. And this year, when Gunner was sidelined on Monday, Isaac Rex, 
he was at a traditional tight end spot. Dallin Holker was out, the stand-up tight end. Braden Cosper was at wide receiver number three. He's going to get a lot of run this year. Uh, and I think Cosper is going to have a very solid season this season for BYU. I ag also agree with Ben Bywater on Kavika Gagne. He's just a good athlete. He's kind of in the mold of a Zane Anderson where former DB moves up into the box. They love his speed. You know, that flash linebacker spot's kind of a hybrid safety linebacker position. Kavika Gagne is going to play. And you look at recent years. 2021, week one, it was Ben Bywater who stepped in for Max Tooley and had an outstanding game. Two years ago against Navy, everyone on BYU's team had an outstanding game, which surprised everyone. But individually speaking from the defensive side, Pepe Tanavasa playing against his old team, he racked up, I believe, 13 tackles. So there's always some outside-the-box linebacker in week one that racks up a bunch of tackles, and you go, wow, where did that come from? I think that could be Kavika Gagne this year. I don't know if it's necessarily USF, but maybe in the first month of the season, as Ben said, uh, we see Kavika Gagne have a big game or two. Fisher Jackson at that OE position. You're seeing Tyler Batty play there. He's at the OE spot. Also, Fisher Jackson's there too. Fisher Jackson's going to play a lot this season, and you've seen some moments. I've seen some flashes from him in practice He's getting the volume of reps, one, which anytime a player gets any sort of rep, you're not just going to give a guy first or second team reps just for the hell of it. You're going to give these guys, if you feel like they'd earned it, they're going to be in those spots. Sometimes you might get a uh, an exploring session where, hey, Sol J, like two years ago, BYU gave a little bit of run to Sol J with the first team offense just to see how he'd handle it. That's not happening now. With this camp, everything's so farther ahead. The install is farther ahead than ever before because of all the experience. Anyone that's getting first and second team reps this go-round pretty much means they're in the two deep, and they're going to get a lot of opportunities to play. And in this defense, where they rotate guys a ton, and they're going to play a ton of bodies, Fisher Jackson's going to get a lot of opportunities, and you're going to see him, I, be, I think, one of the top two or three sack guys this season. I really believe that. Also on the defensive line, a guy that I've heard some good things about during camp, Josh Larson. Physically, he's transformed his body. He looks massive. He's huge. Uh, and it's not, it's not bad weight either. The man has been going to the gym nonstop. If he's at BYU, he's in News Gym, and then he's going home, and he's probably at a Vasa somewhere. Josh Larson is just transformed himself from where he, he when even he got to BYU off of out of Woods Cross to now completely different guys about six five three hundred pounds he's huge he's a defensive tackle and he will play because you look at Atu Naisamahe still coming back from the shoulder uh Brooks Miley was a guy that maybe a DND tackle kind of in that Lorenzo Fawatea mold he's probably out for the year I would expect uh as a shoulder injury we haven't heard that at media day and then you look at all the personnel on, on that defensive line. I just think that Josh Larson, right after Caden Haas, if Nice Mahe is not fully ready to go, uh, Josh Larson's going to see a lot of time. And when you get a lot of reps, you get a lot of time, it naturally lends itself to surprising folks and producing and getting a chance to perform well. And then finally, I mentioned this going into camp, this player's name on Cougar Sports Saturday. I said, keep an eye out for Tyler Little that he might be a second-string offensive lineman, which is significant when you consider how good this offensive line is. If you're in the top 10 on this O-line, you're a dang good player. And BYU's got a top 10 offensive line in college football this year. Tyler Little might be one of the top 10 players on this O-line. And Tyler Little, his story is insane. Had, didn't play football. He hasn't played in a football game since he was in eighth grade. He still hasn't. Or I think he played against Idaho State. But who's going to count that, right? He hasn't played a game with intensity and emotion since eighth grade. And he's probably in the two deep along BYU's O-line. So you think about the offensive tackles that BYU has. You've got Blake Freeland. You've got Kingsley Suamata'ia. You've got Campbell Barrington, who Daryl Funk has said can literally play any position on the line including center, which 
what a luxury for BYU to have a guy like Campbell Barrington, uh, the versatility that he has. And then you have Braden Kime, you've got Harris Lachance, and you've got Tyler Little. Tons of depth on BYU's O-line. It's impressive to see. Uh, and I think that he's going to be someone that, if called upon to play, I think we'll be stunned that he gets a chance to, to have some success this year. I don't know if he's going to be a guy that gets any sort of run, but if needed, I mean, if there's an injury or two, there's a lot of trust in Tyler Little by Daryl Funk. I think it would be the operation would continue to move forward. You don't want it to happen. I get that because Freeland and Kingsley are NFL guys. But if they need to dig into their depth, they've got it. Uh, BYU's in a nice spot when it comes to their, their depth in this uh, BYU football team. Dr. David Oust, I think we are placed where we are intended to be. BYU football players are recruited to where they should be. Thank you for that comment. Uh, coming up on Monday, the AP Top 25 poll is released. And I'll tell you, BYU deserves to be ranked. If they're not ranked in that poll, what's going on in college football? The coach's poll was unveiled, and, and that poll is a downright joke. No one cares about it. The, the coach's poll just needs to be retired already. It's, it's a complete joke. And it's an even bigger joke when you see Texas gets a first-place vote. And I was thinking to myself, who on earth, which coach ranked Texas number one? It, it wasn't Sark because he's not on the coach's ballot. I, I don't know who would have voted Texas number one. But the fact that BYU wasn't in the top 25, I thought was insane. I also thought it was insane that Notre Dame was number five on the coaches poll. But the AP, the, the esteemed media, everyone loves the media. Let's someday I, I hope to get an AP vote one day because I feel like I would actually have a vote that thinks outside the box because I hate with the voters. They go with groupthink. They're so afraid, most of them, to go with anything outside of the norm. They're going to just go with, okay, you go with Alabama, Ohio State, one and two, done. Okay, that's locked in. No one's arguing that. Fine. I think at three, to you know, Georgia, probably three. Okay, fine. Four to 25, I think you can throw anything out there. I think anything could be out there. I think the race for number four in college football this year is fascinating. To me, I would put BYU around 13 or 14. Uh, that's where I'd put them. I think most likely they'll probably be around 22, 23. And it's just frustrating because you'll see Texas probably be in the preseason top 25. And there's nothing that says Texas should be a preseason top 25 team. When you look at BYU, all this returning experience, all this talent coming back, tons of winning experience. And then they probably will be a fringe top 25 team. Whereas Texas, well, they're Texas. Again, this sport is determined by brands. And it's, that's why I'm actually okay with this new era of conference realignment being all about brands because now you're just owning up to what we've all thought is this, what the sport has been determined by brands. You don't care about your actual results. It doesn't matter. BYU could win 10, 11 games the next 10 years each year. Won't matter. You're not a big enough brand. You don't deliver enough audiences, right? So college football, love this sport. But at the same time, it's the dumbest sport on the planet when you think about it. Because <laughs> these AP voters don't do their work. They don't do their research. We'll see. Maybe they prove me wrong. Maybe they'll actually think outside the box. I honestly, I'd put USC number four. That'd be me. I'd go USC four. They're going to be so good. My colleagues at KSL think USC are just a big fraud. They think, they think Utah's, or they think USC is just a joke. I think they're going to go 11 and one. Their one loss be to Utah, and then Utah and USC rematch in the Pac 12 title to determine probably who goes to the playoffs. That'd be my thoughts. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of the Cougar Tracks podcast. Uh, again, thanks to all of you for chiming in. Brian Mace, I need this every day, Mitch. More Cougies, please. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it's coming to you every week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday at high noon here on the Cougar Tracks podcast. I'll be back on Monday at high noon. Tune in YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And oh, by the way, the podcast feed as well. Apple, Google Play, Spotify, 
Leave a five-star rating and a review. Helps out the show a ton. Catch you on Monday. A new week of BYU football practice, and we'll recap the scrimmage. Tune in to Cougar Sports Saturday as well on KSL News Radio at high noon tomorrow. Catch you then here on Cougar Tracks.